Welcome to another episode of Mysteries Unknown. In this podcast, I've got Mark with me. And Mark had a really scary Class A encounter with Bigfoot in eastern Tennessee about three years ago. He was out hiking with a buddy of his, and they walked right up on this creature, and they locked eyes and stared at each other for a minute. But we're going to get into that in just a second. I just want to take a minute to say you guys are awesome. Thanks for the support. I cannot believe the community that we're building here, and I'm glad that you guys are here. Let's jump right into the story. Mark, welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I'm really glad you're here. I know we've had a couple of technical difficulties, but we got you here now. So why don't you walk us through this encounter in eastern Tennessee that happened about three years ago? Just start from the beginning and walk us through it. Okay, sure thing. Well, uh, I like getting outdoors quite a bit. And the first thing I did was just uh, wanted to get out and explore uh, some trails here in east Tennessee after I moved here in, in uh, 2018. I picked out a trail to go hike. And when I started getting into this trail, um, I started coming across some stuff that I've heard about that could be possible squatch activity. Um, I was coming across several uh, logs that were placed across the trail. There was at, at least three of those. Um, they weren't uh, anything that had just fallen over and accidentally blocked the trail. And they were place there um they looked old the weathered the bark was all gone the branches were all gone and um there they were later on up the trail i came across a, a small tree that was about maybe four inches in diameter uh where it was broken off at and it was maybe six or seven feet tall or something like that uh, i stopped and looked at it because it was it looked so out of place it was in the midst of you know fully grown trees that were you know 60 feet high and they were all fine but this little one was was broken and laid directly across the trail you know i, I am taking into notice that it's it wasn't sawed and it Highly doubt it could be hit by a vehicle or something because it would just be too difficult to get there with the vehicle because you know how the forest is around here. It's just very dense. And I actually reached down and grabbed it and realized it wasn't just uh, knocked over or, or, or just broken over. It was completely separated and it had been literally laid propped um laid across the trail but propped against the stump that it left um it was set so it w wouldn't fall off so when i realized it was completely snapped off not just pushed over and still attached by you know a, 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 a attached slightly on one side or something as far as the hike went that day that was about it nothing else happened i didn't hear any noises or anything there wasn't any knocks or whoops anything like that but um later on a couple months later or something i was talking to a friend of mine and told him about this and he 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 doesn't quite know what sure to think about this subject but he had an open ear and an open mind so we talked about it and i suggested why don't we uh why don't we just go down there i think something's going on and we'll just uh place ourselves uh in the environment and uh see what happens so sure enough we we made a date and uh uh, hooked up and we went on down there and uh, so we hit the exact same trail um, uh, didn't find any trail blockage this time nothing like that at all uh, there was just nothing it was just a clear trail but um, I had uh, picked out a spot where we we're just gonna kind of hang out at for a while when we were in the midst of all of the of the area and I just hang out there for a while and and see what happens and then it well anyways we'd been in the spot for about 15 or 20 minutes um just chilling out walking around looking at stuff talking and uh all of a sudden we got a couple of knocks uh back in the woods and we we were both looking back in that direction uh, i had a different vantage point than he did he was a little bit to my left and he was really looking very intently back there. And when I looked, when I started looking back in the woods there, uh, the view was pretty good. Um, 
this was right at the very, very beginning of fall. So, so some of the leaves had just started to turn. It was still 99.9% .9 green. But I could see this black thing, I would say maybe 100 yards back. And it, I thought to myself, what is that? Because it was the only black thing back there. It, was, it wasn't anything else like that. Um, and I started looking at it a little closer. And then I realized that I could see something that looked like a face. Well, it was kind of so far back there that I had to kind of squint a little bit to get a kind of get a better look at it. And then I realized it was a face. And that kind of spooked me a little bit. And then I, I turned, I thought about it, and I turned my head to my buddy and asked him, can, can you see that black thing back there? And just like that, I turned back and it was gone. That was the end of the end of that. Um, the so what I was able to see uh, was completely motionless, motionless, and it was apparently what it looked like was just standing still and staring straight at me. Uh, the the view I had was the the gap between the trees that I could see it through. Um, was a little bit wider than what would be the head. Um, so I could, and basically what I, it seems I was seeing was the, from the head down to about the waist. And then that was it. That was my view. So it was kind of a, a, a long, narrow view. I couldn't see any shoulders, legs or arms, hands, anything like that. But I, I could definitely make out a face looking straight at me. And then, um. Like I said, I asked my, I turned to ask my friend if he could see it. And when I looked back just like that, gone. So uh, we continued. We hung out there for a little bit longer. Nothing happened. Uh, we hung out a little bit longer and we took off on the trail, headed, kept going. My, my buddy actually was doing this hike barefoot and he was, uh, we're near a lake and he walked out in the water and stuff. And after he got kind of in the mud a little bit, and uh, he uh, thought he had something crawling on him. He didn't know what it was, maybe chiggers. He didn't know for sure. And he wanted to try to get him off. So we stopped, and he sat down and was pulling these little things off his leg. And uh, we sat there about 10 or 15 minutes. And as soon as we picked up to go, we got two more knocks. And this is after we had walked for quite a ways. Um, and it was so close to us that I couldn't believe we couldn't actually see something. It was just, it was just out of view, like literally. That's about it for, uh, for that story. Nothing else happened. We still had about a mile to go to get back to the car. You know, that's enough to, uh, have that kind of encounter and then make out of the woods. You're very fortunate. And I, you know, that was a pretty, uh, close encounter how how far off do you think this creature was from you when you first initially saw it i'm gonna say about 100 yards or so 100 yards being 100 yards uh is close enough for most people <laughs> for something like that that's about as close as you want to get for comfort um you know i always like to ask my guests there's a lot to unpack there but one of the things i like to ask my guests is you know how did that encounter affect you your life because those these are life-changing encounters and once you see these things you know they really do change the way you think at things and interact with the woods and nature but how did that affect you i don't really feel any kind of fear about all this i'm really kind of excited about it and um i feel kind of lucky that it happened a lot of people go out and um kind of like try to make things happen or um, just go out hoping something will happen and it never does. Um, it seems like as soon as I started going out in the woods around here, things just started happening. And it's like, it's like, uh, well, there's, there's that location and another location um, where uh, most of those pictures that I sent you is where those are from. Um, many structures of all kinds. <clears throat> Uh, I've had several knocks many times, um, a whoop, um, possible, possible, um, mimicking of, uh, injured dogs. The, the reason I say I don't think it was an actual dog is because, uh, 
at first it really sounded like a, a dog yipping but towards the end when it was about ready to stop the yipping sound it it didn't sound like a dog anymore. It sounded like something making the sound of a dog. I don't really know how to explain that, but it, uh, I got knocked out just a single knock and I stopped and just kind of looked in that area. You couldn't see anything because the foliage was so thick. Um, but then it, uh, a rock was chucked at me. <laughs> I could hear it hitting leaves. I could hear something coming towards me. And I st it came from a little ways back, and I started looking out that direction. And then it, right as I looked, it, it uh, hit a branch just about maybe five feet from me and knocked it to the ground. I never actually saw it. but That's pretty common stuff that these things do. You, a lot of things you mentioned, you know, building structures, you know, copying and mimicking sounds. That's something they do, knocking, all these things. It makes you wonder why they do that and, you know, if they're just trying to get you out of their territory and – all those things, you know, a lot of guys have these encounters and, you know, they're not able to go back into the woods. So you're very fortunate that you can do that. But the second area where you found these structures, was that fairly close to the uh, the first initial place that you had the encounter? Uh, no, they're uh, many miles apart. You know, I always think that these things I have a theory and, and you know, I'm, nobody's an expert. You know, I'm just taking an educated guess. But I think if you see one of these things. You can be rest assured there's another one real close by. I think they, they run in packs, and I think that they're, you're, I don't like to use the word family-oriented, but I believe that they kind of group together and, and things like that. But um, what do you think it wanted? Do you think it was just following you, or what do you think it wanted? That's kind of the million-dollar question. Um, there's nobody I've talked to, a couple of guys that are researchers. and like, like I was saying, I don't claim to be any kind of a researcher or, or expert. Um, just an enthusiast with a, a genuine interest in the subject and not interested in spreading any kind of false stories or, or, or stretching the stories to make it sound better or anything. But uh, nobody really knows for sure, and I haven't got any answers from any of them. It's all kind of a guessing game right now. Um, about uh, The only thing I can honestly say is these X structures are probably marking territory it was right next to the trail um and i thought that was kind of interesting because i'd hike it was a trail i hiked quite a bit and you know one one day it's not there the next day it is and then the next time it's gone so the theory is that they're they'll put them up when they're in the area um, and then take them down when they're done. That does make a lot of sense. You know, you know, why would they not mar mark their territories? And that's probably why they're building these structures. So really cool encounter, man, that, uh, be that close to one and have those experiences with that in mind. What is your opinion on Bigfoot? You know, what do you think it is? Nobody knows. And like you said, nobody, I, there's no such thing as an expert in my opinion, but what's your thoughts on it, man? What do you think Bigfoot is? I'd love to know. Sure. Uh, I, I actually do have an opinion. Um, back in history, there was a, a creature called Gigantopithecus, which matches, the, seems to match the height and the, the body size and everything. Um, and, you know, science tends to think things are extinct a lot, and then all of a sudden they're not extinct anymore. Um, I'm kind of thinking it's it might be that. Definitely... Um, the the knocking, the whoops, and the throwing stuff towards you, um, from what I know, is all primate behavior. Well, there, there's no wrong answer, man. And I, you know, nobody knows what these things are, and it's a lot of educated guesses. You know, I always look at things through the uh, biblical lens of things, and and that's kind of my thoughts on it. It has to be something that fits inside that that realm, but. You know, it's a fun topic. I love the mystery of it, the intrigue of it. It's one of these things that once you get bit by the, you know, the Bigfoot bug, you kind of go down this rabbit trail of trying to figure out information and things like that, man. And, you know, one last question for you. And if you had the opportunity to see one again, would you want to? Um, I haven't been out lately and I'm itching to get back out into uh, uh, my local spot. <laughs> I want to mention too, um, um, uh, some people like to go out and do knocks and, and do whoop, whooping sounds and stuff like that. And try to call at them or knock knock at them. Um, I don't do that. Um, I don't go out and do knocks because I don't want to be mistaken by somebody else that could be out there but can't see me. They might think it's the real thing or, or vice versa. I, I'd rather not hear somebody else out there knocking around. 
and um, me thinking it might be you know the actual deal. Uh, but I will say this in my in my local spot here, um, I got pretty far out there on the trail, and I decided to uh, do some taps that were light. And you couldn't you couldn't hear them very far away, and, uh, and and as soon as I did those taps, I did about just three or four taps with a small branch, and uh, I instantly got um, activity out of that uh, response. I'm gonna say positively from at least one spot maybe maybe also a second spot further away well, it sounds like you definitely you know stumbled on a hot spot and it seems like tennessee there is a lot of activity you know everybody thinks bigfoot they think west coast but man the more i dig into this the more i realize like man it's right in my backyard it's in you know tennessee it's all over the u.s it's not just on the west coast this this guy is everywhere and so it's a lot of fun to talk about man i appreciate you coming on if you see anything at all in the future we'd love you have you back on keep in contact with us and be careful out there man absolutely well we're uh, we're connected now i have your number and um uh, you can't keep me out of the woods so <laughs> awesome man i'm i'm glad you're here man i'm i'm glad you came on and shared that with my audience i know they really enjoyed it guys thank you so much for being here without the support this podcast would not be possible i got more cool stuff coming down the pipeline so make sure to stay tuned like i always say stay prayed up we'll talk to you next time